This is Forge Daily with Mackenzie Barwell on the Forge Audio Network. Forge fans, welcome back to another episode of Forge Daily. We've got a lot to get into today. Today is September 25th, 2023. I'm your host, Mackenzie Barwell, here to give you all things Forge FC. Okay, where do I start? Because a lot has happened between now and the last episode. And I mean a lot. Okay, week 24 of the CPL was crazy. So let me break down what exactly you can expect in today's episode. First, we'll talk playoffs because there's been a few advancements, to say the least, as I'm sure you know. You'll hear from the CPL's Charlie O'Connor-Clark and Christian Jack, who shared their thoughts on what happened this past weekend in the standings. And then we'll get into what exactly went down here at Tim Hortons Field on Saturday, listening into that post-match press conference where Coach Bobby shared his thoughts. And so did Reza Rama, and that was Rama's first presser of the season, so I was particularly excited for that one. All right, here we go. Let's rewind before the matchup against Pacific because that day, mid-afternoon, we find out that Forge clinched a playoff spot. And most of us went into this game assuming that it was for a spot in the playoffs because we weren't going to bank on that result um, that would immediately qualify Forge. But it happened. York lost to Calvary. And with that result, Forge now have yet to miss the CPL playoffs in each of the club's five seasons. This year, the playoffs will run from October 11th to October 29th, so this is your sign. Mark it in your calendar. That being said, the game against Pacific still had a lot on the line because we don't know where these two teams will fall in the standings quite yet. So here was Charlie O'Connor-Clark and Christian Jack describing what exactly this new playoff format means for games like these ones. This new playoff format has made a significant difference. There's undoubtedly Cavalry now locked into one, everything else still to be decided including two and three. And let's talk about tonight. Yeah. This night meant a lot to both these, te- these teams. Bobby Smeniotis in the 89th minute screamed out to everyone, don't forget what this means. Do you know what this game means? Yeah. An old CPL, last year's CPL, it would have been a, just a battle to finish in the top four. Right. Tonight, it meant a lot because now they can get that second seed and they overtake Pacific with that different route. This is a massive and important win for them. And on the other side, a difficult loss for Pacific. Absolutely. I mean, last year, these teams, second and third, would have just been playing each other again in a playoffs in a two-legged tie. This time, the difference between finishing second and third versus having that second chance of going to the final. If you finish third, you cannot host the final. That's right. And both of these teams desperately want to do that. They desperately want to be in that one versus two game. So it means a lot. You can see how much all of these teams are fighting for every second of a game. You know, we had... Seven minutes of added time at the end of this game. Forge going scoring it, and they are screaming at the official that they they don't want a second uh, uh, longer than that's a lot right. because every single moment seems to matter in this league right now, and it's just it's electric right in the end. So as you know, Forge ultimately taking that victory from their matchup with Pacific, sending them two points above them into second place with just two weeks left now in the regular season. And before we break down that match, we've got one other update regarding the playoffs as of yesterday. Forge have now secured a home playoff match after Atletico Ottawa lost 1-0 to Valor FC. So this result confirms a top four spot in the CPL standings for Forge FC, meaning they'll be back at Tim Hortons Field for some more playoff action. Now that we know that, let's briefly talk Saturday's match because I want you all to hear from Coach Bobby and Rama post-game. And let me just start by saying that we now know Malcolm Duncan and Kunle Dadaluk from Pacific are okay and recovering They're in good hands after their scary collision on Saturday. I just wanted to say that as a disclaimer before we get into it. So with that said, a crazy start to the match after Pacific's De Janeiro Daniels opens up the scoring just three minutes in. But guess what? Very shortly later, two minutes actually to be specific, it was Reza Rama who came screaming into the box, finishing a header off a cross from Kwesi Poku. And this was Rama's first goal of the season, but I have to say... Not that I called it, but maybe I did, actually. I wasn't surprised. I was standing on the sideline, and you could just tell how bad Rama wanted this one. He just looked so determined. A lot of hustle from him right out the gate. And it's been a long time coming, so definitely well-deserved for Rama, and we'll hear from him shortly. Now, after the match saw some significant delays due to injury, Wuben Fasius scores again. Uh, This is his ninth now of the season. His goal would happen in the 35th minute. Again, this was initiated by Kwesi, who, by the way, would get man of the match. And unsurprising, of course, considering his performance. He initially found Benny in the box, but then Whoops was able to finish off a rebounded save. 
So the rest of the game continues, and Tristan Henry makes arguably the best save of the entire season. He runs all the way back from outside the 18-yard box, tips the ball over the bar, but injures himself in the process. So he had to be replaced by backup keeper Chris Colongo in the 60th minute. And we'll check in with G tomorrow, so stay tuned for that. To finish it off, Jordan Hamilton scores the stoppage time. He collected his own rebound um, when his first attempt was stopped. It was a very, very impressive goal. Lots of composure. I honestly could go on and on about this game, but let's hear from Coach Bobby and Rama on their thoughts afterwards. Yeah, if you take away the first five minutes, I thought uh, it was uh, it was very good. You know, it's uh, after the first five minutes is exactly what uh, what we wanted. Uh, uh, on the pitch, what well, we wanted tactically uh, from the guys uh, exploiting certain areas, the goals come from those uh, situations which we thought we could uh, we could work on uh, against them. Uh, I think Polk has been brilliant. You know, he's a player we've missed uh, in the last uh, in the last two games and, uh, and throughout the season with little uh, injuries and and so on. Um, but his quality is there on both of those uh, service uh, into the box and just the play running up to that. Um, and our attackers have uh, have done the job and. Uh, Rama's also done a job today, his, uh, his first goal, and uh, it's a great reward for him for all the hard work and, uh, and effort he puts in, uh, you know, for us on the on the defensive end of the ball. But uh, I think we've done a done a very good job. And then, you know, the game it starts becoming tense as uh, as you get past that 70th minute. You know, both teams start realizing what uh, what the points uh, mean. You know, after uh, after 90 minutes, where it'll meet for each team, they start pushing a little bit more. We start sitting and. You know, we know if you keep a very good compact block from them, you'll deal a lot with uh, with crosses. And I think we, we did a good job from that and just find your moments from there. And great on the subs who have come in. They've all done a great job. And I'm very happy for uh, for Jordan and that goal he scored. You know, scoring goals in soccer is the best feeling, especially if you're a defender like me that you don't have many goals. Like, it was my first goal, second year in here. It's a great feeling. Like... To be honest, I was feeling a bit all day that I was thinking a bit of the goal. I was saying, you know, I haven't scored a long time. Like, it would be nice to have a goal. And finally, it came. I really felt it that time because I know Kwesi's crosses are like the best crosses in the team and maybe in CPL since. So I was ready for it and I'm happy. I, it's not the first time that we change formations, that we change players, like uh, positions. We are used to it. We train in for different structures. We we do everything to be ready for the game, whatever. And we are players that we are flexible with the position. So for me, it's, it was not different playing right wing back or play right center back. I really like both positions. I can play everywhere in the defense. So it's good that all of us we can really change everything so quick and be the same. Like, yeah. Now, I will say the only downside of this result from a Forge perspective is that it clinches the regular season title for rivals Calgary FC. However, like I said, it does mean that they move up to that second place spot, two points ahead of Pacific, two matches remaining now in the regular season. So still lots more to come, and we'll get into that a little bit more tomorrow. But that is all for today's episode. We've got another exciting week of the CPL ahead. Stay tuned, and thank you so much for listening. This has been Forge Daily with Mackenzie Barwell. If you like what you heard, please like, follow, subscribe, comment, and share.